in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Besmaab, Wawel, Wemphis Kudus, Adam Lag, Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Greeting to you all, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, hope you all are doing well. May the peace and love of our Lord Savior Christ be with you all. Uh, according to our church calendar, we are in the season of fasting. Uh, one of the great fasts in our church, which is called Great Lent or Abisom, uh, also known as the fast of our of our Lord, because our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Himself fasted. Hence, that is why it's called uh, the Great Lent, because the Great One, the Teacher, our God and our Savior Jesus Christ Himself fasted. Um, great Lent is consist of eight weeks or eight Sundays. And each Sunday has its own theme, given by uh, St. Yared, the hymnist of our church. Uh, St. Yared gave each theme according to its, uh, according to what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did while he was in this earth. So the first Sunday, he called it Zawarere. Uh, and that is what we're going to talk about today. Zawarad. Zawarad is a good word that means he who came down. Uh, talking about God, the Son, uh, our, Lord, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ himself coming down or being born from St. Mary. So let's define a little bit of what is fasting first before we go into uh, the topic. Fasting, by definition, is abstains from food, water, meats, and all animal products, um, and all dairy products, like such as um, milk, butters, and eggs, which is observed or, uh, by all men for a certain times of period, for a certain period of time, determined by the law. So why do we fast? What do we um, benefit from fasting? Um, and generally fasting uh, is good for our body. Uh, but let's look at it why we, what's, what, what do we benefit spiritually as well? So through fasting, we attain a forgiveness of sins. Uh, fasting helps us get under control our um, flesh desires and purifies one's life and free our souls and body from sins. In this way, uh, the free gift of salvation in Christ uh, might produce or produces a fruit in our life. So that's some some of the things that we benefit from fasting is uh, obtaining or forgiveness of sins. It helps uh, by weaken our bodies, um, we strengthen our soul. Fasting also strengthens the human power of love of God and uh of men that we might be more effective in service, in serving. So it also helps us uh, to be effective in serving or in our service. So that's something that, uh, some of the things that is why it's important, fasting, fasting is why it's important. So, and what things that we benefit. Um, one thing we have to understand is fasting did not start from the time of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ fasted, fasted actually started in the beginning of uh, in the beginning of life, uh, when God, uh, after creating the world, after creating uh, heaven and earth, and uh, prepare the Garden of Eden, 
for Adam and created Adam and placed him in the garden. He commanded him uh, not to eat from the fruit of knowledge of good and evil, whereas he can eat from anything, from every tree, um, but not from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So what he's doing, he's uh, abstaining. If God tell him not to eat, Adam is abstaining from eating of that uh, fruit. So he is fasting from that fruit. So that's one thing uh, we need to understand as well, is that fasting begins actually in the beginning, not when our Lord and Jesus Christ himself fasted. <clears throat> So, Great Lent, or uh, the Zawarada, which uh, I mentioned in the beginning, is that he who came down. Uh, the first Sunday uh, is called, esteemed Zawarada, which means, like we say, is he who came down. Uh, ref this refers to the descending of, of the sun, God the Son, our Lord and Jesus, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, from above, and be born from Saint Mary. So, why did our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ need to uh, came down from heaven? Why did God the Son came down and born from the ever Virgin Saint Mary? Well. Like uh, mentioned, God can give commandment, uh, commands Adam not to eat from the f uh, forbidden uh, fruit. But when we look on Genesis chapter three and verse um, eight, it talks about the falling of man. So. Adam and Eve failed to keep God's commandments um, by partaking or by eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which God commanded them not to eat. So, because after that is the judgment on that one is that if they ate, or when they ate, they will surely die. That's what God told them. Well, sure enough, they ate, and they failed. They failed from the glory. Um, they, they, they lost uh, what they, they had, the peace, the, the, the peace they had in, in, in the garden aid. So, because of that, uh, God exiled them from the Garden of Eve. But he didn't uh, exile them without a promise. He didn't punish them without uh, uh, a promise. Because uh, even though they failed, God gave him hope. Gave him once again that he will restate him to his original place, to his original state, which is, um, we find this in the book of Cal uh, Calamitas, uh, that he will be born from his uh, great great daughters, which is Saint Mary, and be born, and came down to earth, and save him. So, uh, and with that in mind, in in the praise of Saint Mary and uh, Monday, Saint Ephraim. This uh, says this, 
God wishes God wished to set free Adam, who was sad uh, at heart and sorrowful in the greatness of his and in his and in the greatness of his compassion and mercy to bring him back to the state where he in where he was formerly. So uh, that is why he has to come down. That is why he, our Lord and Savior Christ, our God, God the Son, uh, need to be born from St. Mary to save Adam, to save, to save humanity, to save mankind because we lost uh the the most important that we had with God and in John chapter 3 verse 13 which is the gospel of the day uh our Lord and Jesus Christ says this no one has ascended to heaven but he who came down from heaven that is the son of man who is in heaven So, no one has ascended, but we're not talking about this today. Um, but he who came down, the Son of Man, who he is in heaven. God is omnipresent. He is everywhere. So, while he was in this earth, um, in, in human uh, flesh, he was also in heaven. So, and we talk about uh, the main reason uh, is to fulfill his promise to Adam. Restating him, take him back, bring him back to heaven, bring him back to uh, paradise. And through his crucifixion, through his suffering, through his pain, we are safe. We have now second chance again and turn uh, to heaven. Giving us the second chance to connect with our God, to be with our God. So, Zawarada talks about God the Son coming down and be born from St. Mary and how through his uh, suffering, we are saved. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came down and, bear, and born of St. Mary for our sake to redeem us by paying the ultimate price, the ultimate sacrifice. He is the perfect sacrifice, which is by giving his uh, precious body and blood on the cross. Because he is the creator and he knows what type of uh, price need to be uh, taken for us to be uh, saved. Because he created us, and he he is the only one that knows um, how we're gonna be safe and by what we're gonna be safe. So this is the ultimate for us, the ultimate price, the ultimate sacrifice God paid for us, and through that uh, we have second chance. To be, to have internal life, to have everlasting life. So, if our Lord Savior Jesus Christ paid this amount of price, what is our um, duty now? What what do we? What is our part? That is why. Um, uh, St. David 
um, in his second Psalms, verse 11 says this, Serve the Lord with fear. Save the Lord, uh, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice in him with trembling. This is what we need to do now. This is our part. He already paid what was supposed to be for us. He was suffered. He uh, he was in pain. He was crucified on the cross and shed his um, blood for our salvation. To this, what would we owe to God? To this, how do we repay to God? Simple is by serving him with fear and joys. To serve with fear means to have mindset of obedience. We need to be obedient to God. But also rejoice in it. We should be joyous, joyfully, joyfully uh, serve our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Serve our God for what He had done for us. And uh, Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse 4 says this, You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear Him and keep His commandments and obey His voice. You shall serve Him and hold fast to Him. So, He already, like we talked about, He already paid the ultimate price for us. He already freed us from the bondage of as uh, and slave, uh, slavery of um, the devil, Satan. He no longer have uh, power over us. We no longer abide to him because of what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ paid for us. So he gave us this amount of um, price. He pays this for us to live in the righteous uh, way, uh, to have a righteous uh, life. So how do we repay to our God? Let's think about that. How do we uh, repay for such uh, price. He gave us his own his life. So throughout this um, period of fasting, throughout this uh, throughout the week, let's take the journey with him. Let's think what he has done for us. Not only what he has done for us but what are we doing in return because year after years we hear a lot of sermon about the water or uh, the great Lent how important it is for us as a Christian as a follower of Christ but do we really think about what he did for us and not just think what he did for us, but how are we repaying to God? What we're doing now is a way of paying him. But is it the right uh, way to let's think about that? Saint, um, uh, King David and his psalm says, serve the Lord with fear. That is the only thing that he required of us. 
is to serve him, to be obedient to him. Adam and Eve failed because of this because they disobeyed him. They disobeyed his commandments. So because of that, they were excuse me, they were cast out from the garden of Eden. From the garden. So, whether it's, you know, every, from every person has a responsibility to ask this question to themselves. Am I living the life, uh, the, 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 the price that our Lord Jesus Christ paid for me? Am I repaying him the right way? So, I no longer, or we no longer, blaming Adam. Ah, because our Lord and Jesus Christ paid that price. He freed us from that uh, bondage. He freed us from that slavery. Slave, slavery. So, how I live in this earth now determine whether I'm going to heaven or the other way. So, um, uh, let's just, you know, think about this because he's going to ask us later. I think the first time he came down to serve us, to teach us, to show us the right way to live uh, or the right way to go to heaven. And if we are saying we are Christian, we are followers of Christ, then we need to live what He taught, what He showed us. Fasting is one of them. He didn't fast because He needed fast to be, to, He didn't need that. But He fasted because He'd be the example. And before he uh, started his ministers, his teachings, he fasted. What does that tell us for that? Before we do anything, we need to fast. We need to pray. So, um, he didn't fast because he needed to be. But to show us, to be example for us. Um, King David in Psalms 100 says, um, Shout out joyfully to the Lord, all, who, all the earth. All the earth should be shouting joyfully, praising Him, praising our God, serving Him. This is how we repay God, by, by fasting, by being obedient, by keeping His commandments. So, and if we don't do that, then the price that he took for us is, is uh, well, think about that. And, um, in a great way, there is no other way better than uh, really God didn't require anything but to serve Him, but to be obedient to Him. But even being obedient and serving Him is for us. 
because through that, God blesses us. Through serving Him, we receive blessing. But, um, if we don't, then what kind, what, how are we going to go into the heaven if we didn't work hard? And, um, that's going to be our lesson for today. Um. The main thing that we need to ask ourselves is, as a Christian, as a follower of Christ, am I living the life, the price that our Lord, the Savior Christ, prayed um, for me? For me, in order to have this life I'm living now, and having second chance as human to... Uh, entered the kingdom of God, his kingdom. Am I living the price that he paid for me? Are we living the life that he avenged for us? So, um, that's what we need to think about it um, as we go journey to uh, this great land. Um, may God help us um, to finish strong. It's not where you started, but how you end it. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of ch- challenging. Um, as many scholars says in our church, the most difficult or um, the the most that had uh tribulation and testing is Samarwa, because he himself was tested, but he um overcame it. So, show us that we can do the same thing by praying, through praying, through fasting, through frustrations, sigdet. All this help us to have salvation. All this is, we're doing this so we can have uh, internal life. To be with our with our God at the end of the day. But to do that, know to that, we need to serve Him with fear. Fear is to have a mindset of obedience, to be obedient. And may God help us to be obedient, uh, give us the strength, give us um his wisdom, his um, strength again to finish strong. But like we said, let's ask this question to ourselves. Am I living the uh, life that God paid the price for us? Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God.